Hello and welcome to another video. In this one, we're gonna be talking about Docker and we're gonna be talking about mounting files into a container. Specifically, I'm going to go over a mistake that I've made a number of times when mounting a file that may change over the lifespan of the container. Uh, and specifically, a little pitfall that you may want to avoid. Uh, anyway, let's jump into it. Okay, so just to be specific here, we're talking about applications that are long living and we're talking about files that are going to get changed. Think, think things like, configuration management or you know, feature flags or something like that. Something where an external system is changing a file and you want that to be reflected in your container automatically. Uh, now, I'm just gonna set up a really silly example and then we'll walk through some of the uh, problems here and some alternatives. So let's start by making a little file. Uh, we're just gonna put hello, hello in it. And we're going to run a container, docker run, rmti, ubuntu, focal, well, we'll use jammy, uh, bash. It doesn't matter what container we use, I'm just <laughs> I'm specifically picking one. And then we're going to volume mount in that file. So we're going to volume mount pwd slash t, and we're going to, we'll just put it at the root of the file system. Uh, we're going to do read only. This is typically how you would mount in some file where the external system is modifying this, uh, but it actually doesn't matter for our demonstration today. All right, cool. So we've run this. If we cat that file, everything works great. Uh, and if we're something, if something were to try and atomically replace this file, let's say we had our configuration management system, which wrote out, I don't know, t.temp with high high in it, and then it moved t.temp over t. Uh, so this t file now has the contents high high. Unfortunately, inside of our container, those are not going to be reflected. And the reason for this is the mount that we performed here is actually a mount over this specific file, this specific inode. And uh, we can see that by doing ls-i on t inside of our container. Uh, well, let's actually restart this so we can see that it works successfully and then uh, show you it changing. So this file has the inode 4332905. And if we look at it outside, uh, it also has that same inode here. If we do the same thing as we did before, where we change it to something else and then move t.temp over t. Uh, this t outside of the container now has a different inode, 4332904, uh, whereas this one still has that same inode. Basically, a mount is going to mount the exact thing that you tell it to mount inside the container, nothing more, nothing less. Now, this can be successful, this can work properly, but only if the outside system is modifying this file in place. But that also loses you a bunch of guarantees around atomicity. Like if you're going to modify a file in place, you may see the contents of a file partway through a write or before a truncation or any sort of weirdness like that. So let me just show you what an in-place write would look like. So if we were to uh, look at T here, and then we were to append to it. So if we did echo i hi and appended to t, uh, this is going to modify the file in place. You'll see here, this is one of the cases where it works. Now, we've sort of shown the problem, but we haven't really shown how to solve this. Uh, typically, the way you wanna solve this is by introducing one level of indirection, uh, a directory, basically. So you would instead mount to the parent directory and not change that parent directory. So just mount that parent directory and then replace files inside of that directory. Uh, to show you something like that, you might have a config directory. And if we did, we mount our config directory to slash config. Uh, oh, we didn't actually put a little file in there. Let's, uh, hello, hello into config slash T. And so we can see that file there. If we cat config slash T here, that works great. And again, let's say our config system uh, came along and wrote out a different file and then moved it into place atomically. Uh, I did a video on atomicity, so I'll try and remember to link that in the description. Otherwise, you can search my channel for it. Uh, if we move this file in place, you'll see that now this uh, config slash t has been updated. So we don't have to restart the container to receive those updates. And that's because we've instead mounted the directory into the container rather than the, in the individual files. Uh, I've also seen another mistake with this, which is uh, a symlink, mounting the symlink into the container. And symlinks are, are resolved before the volume mount even occurs. So let's say we had uh, make, or let's see, ln-s, uh, our current file to, uh, let's just say current. So you'll see here, current points to T. And if we were to uh, mount in slash current to slash T, 
it's not going to mount the sim link. It's going to mount what the sim link points to it. So if we look at ls-i slash t, we're going to have this inode number. And if we were to, uh, or let's see, touch t2 or echo hello, hello to t2. And then we were to rewrite our sim link from current to t2. Yeah. Uh, you'll see that this is not reflected inside of our container. And that's because Again, uh, we're not mounting a sim link. We're mounting the inode that the sim link points to. Anyway, hopefully you found this useful. If there are additional things you'd like me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.